Yo, what is up? What's been happening? Welcome back to another episode of Those Car Dudes. video on the S14 manual conversion, we released the whale from the car and got rid of the automatic slush box. And in this episode, we're gonna be putting on all the manual stuff so we can be shifting through gears. We are so stoked that we found a manual gearbox for in the San Silvia uh, online and salvaged all the other parts. They are so hard to find. There's Nathan. so many little bits <laughs> and pieces and they are getting harder and harder to get, but not impossible. Now, since we did the filming for this episode, we realized that there was quite a bit of footage missing. And Somehow. It just disappeared. Disappeared. This is a Nismo universe somewhere out there into another galaxy. So we're gonna be taking footage from Nathan's E30 and try our best to explain to you how to do a manual conversion on your car. We're gonna take our time explaining all these steps because we wanna make sure that you guys have the right information and can do it as easily as possible. Nathan's E30 being a rear wheel drive car and then the San Silvia being a rear wheel drive car, the process should be very similar. Now that the automatic gearbox is finally removed from the back of the motor, we had access to the rear main end seal. Now this is a good time to be replacing that seal because uh, the one that we had on the car was, well, it needed to be replaced because it was leaking oil everywhere. It's probably the original one and you don't want to have to pull your gearbox off again later just to replace a seal. So you may as well do it while you're there. We used a flathead screwdriver and a mallet to tap all the way around the rear main end seal. Once we had it separated from the back of the motor, we were able to then pry it off and then use a rubber mallet to tap the new one on. The next thing we did was remove the spigot bush. You can very carefully drill the edge of the spigot bush in one place. Once you can pry it inwards on itself like that, it should be loose and you can pop it out the back of the motor and put the new one in. Now when you put the new one in, you wanna put a bit of grease on it and then you wanna tap it in gently to where the old one was sitting into the back of the motor and you wanna tap it in evenly so it sits flush. You can then use a socket and then tap it in all the way. Nathan, we make it sound really easy, but it was a bit of a mission. It was. <laughs> After that, it was time to put the sandwich plate on the back of our motor and line it up with the dowels. And then once we're done that, we could put the flywheel onto it as well. Now with the flywheel, it's very important that you get it skimmed at the very least or replace it uh, so that your clutch does grip properly and doesn't slip. Now when we put the flywheel on, there's a whole bunch of bolts in the middle that need to be tightened up. And to do that, you can pop a uh, pry bar on the side of the flywheel on the teeth to hold it in place. Even get your friend to hold it there while you tighten up the bolts in the middle of the flywheel in a crisp cross pattern. Feel free to look up the torque specs as well to be sure that nothing's gonna come loose. Now with the sandwich plate on the car and the new flywheel skimmed, or if you've got a brand new one, good for you. It's time to put the clutch plate on the car. Now we need to make sure that we align the clutch plate uh, before we put the pressure plate on. We're gonna locate the clutch plate onto the flywheel and put the clutch alignment tool uh, through the clutch plate into the flywheel, into the back of the motor. Now make sure you have a look at your clutch plate to make sure you're putting it on the right way. In our case, we had to make sure that the springs were facing out towards us and that the clutch plate was sitting flush on the flywheel. Now with the clutch plate being held onto the back of the flywheel with the clutch alignment tool, we are able to take our pressure plate and put it onto the flywheel. Now it does locate on only one way, so make sure you locate that through the dowels on the flywheel. And once that's on, we would then make sure that all the bolts are tight on the pressure plate. And uh, we're gonna do that in a crisscross pattern. Again, check the torque specs to make sure everything is nice and tight. Once the pressure plate is all tightened down, we're able to remove the clutch alignment tool and the clutch plate is ready. We're ready to go for some skids, Nathan, let's well, go. Well, not quite. We still need to put the gearbox on, which is kind of an important part, but at least most of the tricky stuff is over. You are also going to need one of these throw-out bearing holding clips, uh, which will essentially hold the throw-out bearing 
to the clutch. So we're gonna put this on and then install the throw out bearing to the gearbox. So when it comes time to install the little clip that holds the throw out bearing onto the fork, I've made this little paper clip example to show you guys. Basically, if we pretend that this is the throw out bearing, a little top view, you wanna slide the clip on to the throw out bearing in a way that the, the little U shape um, is facing down. Basically, when you slide the fork on, the fork goes between uh, the clip and the platforms that are on the throw up bearing holder. So basically, we'll just slide on like that. I see many people, they um, install the clip the other way around where the teeth are facing down. So when the fork slides on, the teeth are biting down on it. You don't want that. When you're sliding in the fork between the platform of the throw up bearing and the clip, uh, you basically want to slide the fork in from this side. I see many people uh, trying to slide it in from this side and have that overlapping bit in the fork. The way you want to do it is basically sliding the fork in from this side. Now that you have your fork connected to your throw bearing using the holding clip, it's going to be important that you put some grease on the inside of the bearing. Make sure that you put some grease on the edges of the clip as well where it's in contact with the fork. Put some grease onto the shaft as well and also make sure that you put grease on the little ball joint where the fork will be located on the box. Now the way you put the fork onto the gearbox would be to pry back onto the throw out bearing a little bit, locate the fork on the side of the box and at the same time slide the throw out bearing onto the shaft of the gearbox. Once you have the shaft on, push onto it and it should just click into that little board joint at the back of the box. Now all you have to do is install the boot and you'll be shifting gears in no time. You can now slide on your manual gearbox. Now if you're working in your garage, you are probably having your car lifted up off the ground with some jack stands. And uh, what you're gonna do is you're gonna drag that manual gearbox from outside the car, underneath the car, and you and your mate are gonna use a jack and you're gonna try to lift it onto that jack. You're gonna jack up that gearbox and get it to a place where it's slightly in line with the back of the motor. And then you're just gonna spend some time just wriggling it on there, really. Wiggling it on Literally, there, Nathan. Literally, <laughs> just gotta wiggle it side to side, up and down. Now that we have the manual gearbox finally on the back of the motor, we're able to tighten down all of the bell housing bolts. Now remember that two of the bell housing bolts hold the starter motor onto the gearbox. You have to make sure that that starter motor is aligned to the flywheel so that when you crank your car, uh, everything works. Now make sure that you torque all of the bell housing bolts to spec, just to make sure nothing comes uh, loose when you go to a track day or anything like that. Although we didn't. It's true, we didn't. But we'd tell you that for your sake. But you should. <laughs> <laughs> to install the cross member, we need this adapter plate which will help the holes to line up on the car. Now because this is an automatic chassis from factory, the holes for the cross member on the car is gonna be in a different place now that we have a manual gearbox installed. Once we have the adapter plate bolted onto the cross member, we can then take the cross member and bolt it onto the gearbox. We can then use a jack to jack the back of the gearbox up into place, and then we can bolt the cross member onto the chassis. Now we're just about to install the clutch pedal and the master cylinder. Now the way it connects to the car is by drilling three holes into your firewall. And that is two small holes for the threads to hold on and one big hole for the master to fit through. Now if you can imagine uh, the firewall sitting right flush in between and then you just sandwiching uh, these two things uh, right into the middle of it. Now this is an S13 clutch pedal so we might need to put some washers in just so it can fit nice and flush. But other than that Nathan, we will be having this in the car really soon and we can start bleeding the clutch with the slave cylinder, so I'm excited for this, Nathan. We're, we're making small progress and we're doing it. We are. We How are. exciting. It's gonna be me. Now, when you fit your master cylinder to your pedal uh, once it's on the car, uh, you wanna make sure that that clip lines up nice and neat. Make sure that you tighten up the uh, holding clip on your master cylinder. So when you do put it onto your clutch pedal and you be pumping that clutch, uh, nothing will move or shift or go loose. Uh, but once we have that on the car, Nathan, we'll be shifting gears in no time. Pumping that clutch. How exciting. 
Now just next to the steering column there is a little piece of carpet that you can uh, take out. It's like Nissan wanted you to find that and do a manual conversion on the auto. So uh, what you're gonna do is remove uh, that piece of carpet and once you've removed it, uh, you'll see uh, by the markings on the front firewall uh, where you need to be drilling. Um, so you're gonna have to drill three holes, one, two small ones and then one big one in the middle to fit the clutch and the master cylinder. JD being a Nissan butcher, drilling into the Nissan, or normally I'd say an RB butcher, but this is an SR gang. SR gang gang, SR gang gang, you butcher. You smaller light, eh? You butcher. JD is asking for the big mama drill bit. He's been drilling away, making pilot holes. That's big, bro. There you go, bro. Good luck. Huge. We've manual converted the car. Not quite. We have three pedals though, so that's a bonus. Anyway, that's how you manual convert the car. It's little, Nathan, but it's uh, it's mighty. Little but mighty, and that's what we use to describe the uh, SR. The little but mighty S SR. SR gonna do drifting. Oops, ow. That was my bunny bone, bro. Oh. This is one of the most exciting parts, is the fact that we have three pedals and they all work, which is amazing. But as you can see, we've got this ugly automatic rectangle going on over here. So we're gonna have to cut that to shape because nobody needs that binding on their clutch. So we're gonna cut the sides off that, make that smaller. Got our clutch pedal all mounted up, looking good. Look at that, Nathan. Oh, three pedals. And How I've exciting. said it before, but I'll say it again. It is not a manual unless it has a clutch pedal. It's not a manual until it has... What is that, and Nathan? What is that? And a short shifter. Oh. It's like your quick release steering wheel. You got a quick <laughs> release shifter. <laughs> that was pretty good, Mark. The fast are good, man. I think that'll look good. Decent size. So JD has cut it too small. Now we have this big gap in the middle. Wrecked it, Nathan. You would... And here we have the slave cylinder. And this little guy mounts on the side of the gearbox and is connected to the master cylinder by this little line here. So now we're gonna mount this to the side of the gearbox and bleed the clutch. Now we realize that the slave cylinder that we got for the manual conversion does not have a push rod in the middle. So uh, we ended up getting uh, just a whole nother brand new uh, slave cylinder. So this one will come with all the parts that we need, such as the push rod, the actual cylinder itself, also the rubber boots. So we're gonna try and make that fit because without this rod, you are not gonna be able to shift gears anytime soon. Now with everything connected to the box and the car, all the lines hooked up, we are finally able to put uh, some fluid back into the car. So what we have here is just some brake fluid. So we're gonna top off the reservoir at the top of the master cylinder. And then we're gonna start pumping the clutch and see if we can bleed it and try and get some pedal, Nathan. Bleeding the clutch is a pretty simple process. However, it does take a little bit of time and you need two people to do it. You need one person inside the car pumping up the clutch pedal. And then you need a second person underneath the car turning the bleed nipple on the slave cylinder. Now as Nathan goes up into the car and will be pumping the pedal, uh, I will be bleeding the slave cylinder from that little bleeding nipple right there pumping up the clutch pedal in the car until they start to feel a little bit of bite or a little bit of pedal feel happening. At that point, they'll push the pedal in all the way and hold it there while the person underneath the car undo the bleed nipple, allow some of the fluid and the air bubbles to come out, tighten it back up, and then the person inside the car would release the clutch pedal and repeat the process of pumping. 
Now you keep doing that probably about 10 times, just basically until you have decent pedal feel all the way through the motion of pushing the pedal. As the air bubbles are coming out of the line, you get more and more pedal feel and it becomes quicker each time. And eventually, after bleeding it a few times, you'll have that amazing pedal feel all the way through and it'll feel like it should. We have finished bleeding the clutch and now we've got awesome pedal feel happening in the car and honestly it just makes you want to get in and go. But we've still got a few more things that we need to do. Before we go on to the next thing, I just want to address the elephant in the room, which is uh, we've been doing this over a few days. It hasn't all been done in one night. Like the last clip of me that you saw, I probably had facial hair. Now I don't. Oh, I have a mustache. You gotta have a mustache, right? <laughs> it's gonna come off soon, I promise. The ginger mo must go. <laughs> we have done this over a couple of nights now. Few days because there was a few parts and stuff that we had to return or things that we were missing but everything that we put in the video we made sure is correct so you are getting the correct information if you're doing this at home we want to make sure that this helps you and not confuses you like we've been confused about quite a few things multiple so times multiple Nathan. times so if you want clarity come to those car dudes <laughs> Stance life Nathan Stance life Oh, ow. Now that we have the rear seal on the car, uh, we are finally able to put in our drive shaft. Now, before we put it in, we're gonna make sure that we put some grease just on the front end of the front shaft, uh, that part that will slide into the manual box. Whoa. Bro, you're huge, bro. We get it. You're yeah. huge. <laughs> this guy doesn't even go to the gym. He just he just flipping does manual conversions on the regular. Oh, bro, hard life, eh? We're it's forty. Being... Like I'm milking the cow, Nathan. <laughs> Yep. These oil lines that run to the front of the radiator that ran to the automatic box is no longer needed So you can just put a bolt in there or even uh, what would be better to do would be to cut them smaller and then put the bolt in so We're just gonna put these in for now and then cut them later um, as we will be doing some seals at the bottom here So we'll deal with that another time. Otherwise, I'm just gonna tuck them away Ideally cut them smaller put a bolt in clamp them down just because they're not needed anymore. Let's be honest, the only reason we're not cutting them smaller now is because we're impatient and we want to drive the car. Drive it, bro. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> it is finally time to put some oil in our manual gearbox. So the cool thing about this car is that by taking out the shifter, you can actually just pour it in from the top. A lot of cars, you have to put the pump the oil in from the side of the gearbox underneath the car. Um, but this particular one's really easy. You just literally measure it out and pour it in the top. This particular gearbox takes 2.4 liters. And then once we're done that, we're gonna install our brand new short shifter, which is very exciting, which we got here. So uh, quite pumped on that, JD. That's actually really cool, Nathan. I can't wait to, to put that in. Um, it looks so good with the bride background. Can we just have bride backgrounds bride. for like, Bride sponsor us. Can we just have bride like bride, coverings bride, bride, everywhere, bride. like on the roof bride. and the door cards and like your shirt and your although there's the a curtains. confession. There's a confession to make, JD, because these these bride seats then they're actually they're actually replicas, aren't they? They're replicas. They are, right? They're replicas. Yeah. No one can afford new ones, bro. Yeah, I know. Or real so ones. So expensive. Not new ones, real ones. <laughs> that's so expensive. But they, they're pretty good reps and hey, they do the same job, right? They look very cool in here. Automatic car, you can't start the car unless it is in park. 
Now that this is a manual car, we don't have park, so we can't start the car. Now, to bypass this, you need to jump over to this plug here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut these two wires on this plug and bridge them together and then plug it back in. And then that will bypass that park starting feature and you should be able to start your car in neutral. For the reverse lights, you need to locate this plug, which is the third one down on the side of the fuse box underneath the bonnet. Now on that plug, you'll see a black wire and a light green wire. You need to follow those all the way down to the bottom of the car and make sure that you hook those two wires up to the two black wires coming out of the reverse switch. The speedometer is located at the back of the gearbox and it has a green and a black wire coming from it. Now this thick black wire in the harness has two red wires in the inside of it. Take those two red wires and run it to the black and green wire going to the speedometer. Now you can see where you're going for those reverse entries and you can know how fast you're going. We've got oil in our manual box. We've just installed our short shifter. There's a bunch of different options you can get for this car, so we didn't show how to do that. But that's all installed now for the final touch. Let's go. We are almost ready to drive the car, but first we have to put the ECU back in and also the seats. Top it up with oil and then off she goes. Phew. It is time, Nathan. It is time. After all the hard work to start the car. Will it move? Will, Will it, it move? Start. Start. Does the wheels move? Yes! <laughs> Done it! Mate, she's making a bit of weird noises, but I reckon we go for a drive. Absolutely. There she is, everybody. There she is. The manual Sylvia. <laughs> Let's go. The manual conversion is done on the S14 and it works and I actually can't believe that we pulled it off, Nathan. I can't believe it. It is amazing and... Uh, <laughs> what an experience. <laughs> what an experience. And if you've come this far, well done. Well done. This is a big task. And if you're a mechanic, well, you do this every day, but the old average Joe like us, it's quite a big job. It's cool. And um, we were so stoked that we were able to find all of these parts for this S14. I mean, these parts are getting harder and harder to find as these cars get older and older but man, iconic cars will always have a place in my heart and I'm sure in your heart as well. There's something about 90s JDM and that old school feel it's is definitely difficult. something special. But thank you so much for watching these videos, guys. I really hope it helped some of you. And uh, even if it just helped you make a decision, do I buy a manual car or do I buy an auto and convert it to manual myself? Or do I buy a manual and convert it to auto? If you're of the latter, that's that's you, not us. But uh, thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you hit that subscribe button for plenty more content to come. Follow us on Instagram, see what else we get up to, and we will catch you in the next video. Peace, Peace out. out.